He can play just about any position on the court. And Paxson Logic, you saw him wearing that headband. He's wearing that headband to cover up the 10 stitches that he got in the shoot around this morning, this afternoon. Sounds like a little more than just a shoot around <laughs> when you end up with 10 stitches. Baycott controls the tap. Radford, by the way, the preseason number two pick in the Big South Conference under third year coach Darius Nichols. And there's Baycott to make it 2 0 Carolina. Radford obviously undersized trying to play against Armando Baycott. North Carolina did a great job spreading the floor. Three ball at the top is good, and that's Kenyon Giles, who averaged eight and a half points a season ago and was an all freshman pick in the Big South. He started out very well, Wes, and then faded a little bit during the season, but then came on at the end. And there's Paxson Wojcik for his force points as a Tar Heel. He answers Giles' triple with one of his own. No early jitters for these ball clubs. Here in the first minute of the season. Giles picks up on it. Looking for some help. Going to scoop. And Ingram had a shot at it. I don't think that ball hit the rim. Smith a three. Got it. And Wes, that is obviously the key for Radford. They have got to put points on the board, and the more threes they can make, obviously, the better. Daquan Smith, by the way, terrific player. Their leading returning score at almost 14 a game a season ago. Ingram tees one up. Wow, Harrison Ingram. How about this ball game from behind the line to start? <laughs> Smith back out front now, and this is Brian Antoine, a Villanova transfer who was very good a season ago. He's preseason all Big South this year. Giles splits the double team, looking for help in the lane, and traveled with it. Jamal Spearman, who works with Roger Ayers and Kellen Milliner tonight on the whistle. Giles is a guy who likes to shoot the ball. He is not shy. He is not afraid. And I'll tell you what, if the referees are going to call walk, you really got to do something because it's practically, <laughs> you know, the travel has practically been outlawed. Yep. Four lead changes already here in this ball game. And an off the ball whistle. Roger Ayers out from underneath. And it's going to be on Kenyon Giles. His first, first on red. Wes, and early in the season, we we're going to tell you that that's one of the things the referees are going to be looking for. They want to create freedom of movement so they're, they're going to call fouls on people who are bumping cutters as they go through. R.J. Davis for Baycott. A little two-man game. Scoop with the left hand, and Baycott third try good. Four for Baycott. Wes, when North Carolina drives the ball to the basket, this is a problem not just for Radford, but for everybody who's going to play North Carolina. You've, you've got to come and help, but you have to account for Armando Baycott because if you don't, it's three against one, but the one wins with that offensive rebound because it's Armando Baycott. Antoine, here is Turner. Chandler's a grad transfer from Bowling Green into Darius Nichols' lineup this year at Radford. Now, North Carolina switching just about everything out there. It makes it hard to get by and get to the basket. Giles against Ingram, 10 to shoot, now five to shoot for are you and the jumper good nice fadeaway Kenyon Giles second field goal Carolina though Dan showing you the early flash of transition and pace and Hubert Davis mentioned pace a handful of times in our visit today and RJ Davis knocks it down from way out front plus he struggled at times last year from three but you know he was a little bit streaky but he shot 36 percent overall and he was absolutely fabulous in the first half of that exhibition game three minutes gone this first half hubert davis has already dipped to his bench a three from out on the perimeter no good off the hand of smith here's davis and carolina in transition a little pull up jumper rj davis has five west they want to push it Dan, they've got three threes in their first six field goals for their 15 points. Cormac Ryan is the Notre Dame transfer. And he's a good defender. He's got a tough matchup against Antoine. Giles, right hand scores. They really should consider guarding him at some point. Right? Kenyon Giles? Yes. He's good. He's a very good player. He's aggressive. Yep. He's gotten bigger and stronger in the offseason. It's one of the things Coach Nichols is excited about. 
with this third edition of his Highlanders. Here's Baycott backing down inside, lost the handle, and draws the foul. Six early for Baycott. Foul will be on Justin Archer. It's going to get us to break. Armando Baycott has got three field goals, and all of them right at the rack early in Chapel Hill. And reclassified and joined Carolina over the offseason. And Zayden High from San Antonio has quietly kind of developed a little bit of a, a reputation as a guy they think might be able to help sooner than later in his rookie campaign. Well, High is a guy, very bouncy, athletic. I think that he might be one of those guys who's better than they thought he was going to be. Uh, yeah. But there's no question about how good Godot is. Baycott missed the and one. And that's and an area where Baycott could really improve. He gets to the line an awful lot. Yep. Bradford trailing seven now. Carolina off to a really hot start. Hit three threes, and they're seven of their first nine. Bradford four, their first six. Two of those are triple. And their defense has been really good at keeping... Bradford out on the perimeter. Antoine missed the three over high. And here is Cadeau. Excited to see this young man. Oh, he can really go. Yep. Cadeau left to shoot. Kicks it for Davis. There's a skip pass for Woji. He'll slide in. I think lob for Baycott. And that got knocked away. Highlanders with the giveaway from Carolina. And back out front, this is Giles against Baycott. Season. With Baycott, you shoot the ball and let him go get the rebound. <laughs> and now Giles squaring up Baycott. Fall away is no good. And Radford gets a second chance, and there goes Archer from close. And a leaping follow by DeAndre Pierce. Was basket basket interference. Interference. Yep. So that will go back to Carolina. And... Justin Archer comes out of the ball game. Chandler Turner returns. Uh, Turner number 10, or excuse me, uh, DeAndre Pierce hung on the rim while he had his hand on the ball. <laughs> and Cadeau, and there is an offensive foul. It's going to be on Baycott on the Cadeau drive. Armando's first, number one on Carolina here in this first half. You see again, Hubert Davis going to his bench early. Baycott's going out after that first foul. Washington in the game. Yep, Jalen Washington is the sophomore Gary, Indiana, who averaged 16 minutes a year ago against the conference. One of the only two bench guys to average in double figures, and he did not participate in every game. And there's a hand check foul on Ingram. Dan, walk us through some of this because a hand check in the midcourt area, again, preventing the freedom of movement, right? Well, and the freedom of movement is going to be a big thing, and that is a hard matchup for Ingram. Remember, North Carolina is switching everything, so here's Ingram, and he's got both hands on him, and that's right in front of the official. You're not going to get away with that. This is Truth Harris, the junior, wearing number four for Radford. Junior college transfer, five to shoot. Giles with Cadeau. Trying to bounce off the Pierce screen. Giles at three. And Washington the rebound for the Tar Heels. Hubert Davis wants his group in what transition. And High couldn't hang on to it. Lost it over the inline out of bounds. But what a delivery of the basketball by Elliot Cadeau. Well, he threw it just, I guess, a little bit behind him. And so it's not a great pass unless he catches it. But that gives you an idea of what Cadeau is trying to do. This is a bounce pass. And High just stumbled. Third turnover on Carolina. Harris on the drive and score. First Radford bucket for Truth Harris. Transfer from Indian Hills Community College, but from Mount Vernon, New York. Darius Nichols said he is a New York basketball player in a good way. Ryan the catch and shoot three. We can't leave him. And you get an idea, North Carolina is pushing the ball up the court. If they're not trying to score in transition, they're trying to score with their secondary break or in their early offense, they are really looking for quick opportunities. If you know anything about Cormac Ryan, you know that you can't let him shoot a three. He knocks that down for his first Carolina points. Well, you can't give him that much room. Antoine. Oh, my. Tough shot. First bucket for Brian Antoine. There's a lead. Natario's almost threw it away. Ingram ends up in the seats. Cadeau was slowing up to Harrison. He didn't realize. Yeah. Harrison Ingram went over the uh, row of photographers, the 
portable chairs and is everybody okay down there? Six feet uh, seven, 230 pounds coming at yeah. you full speed. That is not a good sight. No. <laughs> They're going to have to do more than just adjust the chairs over there. <laughs> Ingram is a good looking player. Yeah. yeah. Out of Dallas and of course started his career at Stanford. Seven minutes in. Carolina the six point lead. Trenton Walters is making his first appearance on the floor for Radford wearing number two. On the drive, tough shot, Smith for his second field set. Yes, and I think you're going to see more of that in college basketball this year with the rule change that's going to make it harder to take a charge in that situation. Lob and catch for Jalen Washington and a Radford foul inside. And it's going to be on DeAndre Pierce. Well, that's a little bit of a break, I think, for North Carolina because that's a hard pass to throw from that angle. Yep. Cadeau will put it in play. Here is Ingram against Daquan Smith. Pretty good matchup here. Nice move and good finish. Well, nice defense by Smith. Yep. Walters and Radford on the move. I think it would behoove Radford. They're not a running team, but they need to push the ball down early. Into the corner, and a reach foul on Zayton High will be his first. Third on Carolina, team fouls are even. Now, Zayton High a little over aggressive that time, Wes, because Chandler is not a guy who's going to look to shoot the three from the deep corner. And High's out there, he's trying to pressure the ball, but you got to know who you're playing against. He runs out, jumps up in the air, and that allows Chandler to put the ball down and draw the foul. Yep. This is a very good basketball team in the Big South. They were 21 and 15 a season ago, won four of their last six and lost to Charlotte in the championship of the CBI. Well, they won two games in postseason play, and that was a first for them. Yeah. Five to shoot. Antoine. Brian Antoine, he's got big league credentials. The the opening of the season in an ACC venue won't phase him. It's a two-point game. Radford going to shoot for the tie and the lead, and Antoine can't finish it. 20 to 18. Inside, Baycott to catch. Working against Pierce, and DeAndre Pierce did enough to alter it. Now, again, that's a tough place to make that entry pass. Baycott did very well to catch it, but he couldn't really do anything with it. Walters wiring through on the dribble. Well, he's a little guy, so <laughs> he finds himself down in there, yep. and that's his first idea is to get out. Super Davis one day. Maybe off the ball there, but didn't get it. Here is Smith for the tie, and they caught another rebound. They tried to lead it to high and turned it over. Six turnovers on Carolina here in the first almost nine minutes of play. On the drive, Antoine. Pierce the rebound and score. First points for DeAndre Pierce. It's an 8-0 Radford run to tie the game at 20. Carolina's buoyed the Highlanders by turning it over too a couple times here. Now that's been the key so far. North Carolina, you can't score when you turn it over. Baycott. You see Giles or Smith rather defending. Into the corner, Ryan's three. Got it. Russell, you cannot defend something like that. Baycott has a mismatch inside. They come to help. He makes a great pass out of the post. And then that ball, it, it hardly stayed in Cadeau's hands for a second before he got it to a wide open Cormac Ryan. You get that kind of ball movement, you're going to get an open three. Walters digging in. And they get it back out here to Smith against Ryan. They use the Pierce screen. Foul line fade. Good. Boy, they're making some shots, aren't they, Wes? Yeah, Daquan Smith's got seven. He's looked every bit the uh, preseason recognition after being second team all Big South last year. Well, this is a tough bunch, Radford. Yep. Here's Cadeau. Weaving back around the screen, leaves it to Baycott. And one for Armando inside. He's got four field goals. He's got eight points and a chance for his second Attempt at a three-point play when we continue from Chapel Hill. The way he comported himself. He was what the, the ideal of a North Carolina basketball player should be, is. He was just, uh, you know, again, he was a great representative 
of this university and of his family. And as Hubert Davis said, I'm not in Chapel Hill if it's not for my uncle. It's just that simple. In fact, Hubert was the beneficiary of one of what had to be one of the great car rides in America. Here is Turner and Radford on the attack. When Hubert was a little guy, Walter Davis and his college teammate for the shoot for Giles here against Seth Trimble from the logo air ball. So Carolina gets the stop, and there's Seth Trimble, the sophomore from Menominee Falls, Wisconsin, with the defensive effort there. But Walter Davis and Phil Ford were college teammates at Carolina. Both were members of Coach Smith, who coached the 1976 Olympic team in Montreal, Dan, as you remember. And Hubert Davis, as a little guy, got to ride home from Montreal with Phil Ford and Walter Davis. <laughs> I mean, talk about your young influences, right? How about that moment? Uncle Walter and Phil, and there's Brian Antoine's third field. Now, Antoine, when he was in high school, he was one of those five-star yes, recruits, a McDonald's All-American. He went to Villanova. He had some injury problems at Villanova. But when he's healthy, he can really play. Ryan airball the triple from the right. Off comes Smith. Pull up for the Murray State transfer. Good. Daquan Smith with nine. Four regular field goals, one of three. Yes, they're doing a great job hanging around. Yep, sure are. Inside turned over again by Carolina. Seven of them for the Tar Heels. Archer in transition against Ingram. Radford with the lead and adds to it. Justin Archer's first basket. What balance and patience there by Archer, West. Archer last year was one of the leading offensive rebounders in the country. He's a very effective inside player, but he just picked up his personal foul with a bump he didn't need to use. Yep. Second foul on Archer. Bible Hill, and we're getting ready to see Jalen Withers for the first time. Harrison Ingram, Cormac Ryan, start of the ball game tonight for Coach Davis. Here comes Withers, former All-ACC freshman pick at Louisville. Who started over 50 games at Louisville. Ingram started more than 50 games for Stanford. Cormac Ryan in his career has started 116, now 117 games counting tonight. So not only did they get transfers, they got experienced transfers. Withers and Ryan, as we mentioned earlier, are grad students. I like how you use experience and not old. Well, when Here you get is. to be my age, you don't use the three-letter word. <laughs> Drive by Davis. A lot of contact. Baycock brings it up at the rim. And we've seen that twice now, Wes, and we're going to see that innumerable times during the course of the season. One of the Tar Heels is going to drive to the basket. Help comes. And all Armando Baycott does is just go to the basket. Yep. Seven and a half to go here before the break. 29-28 Radford. Smith, a runner high Whoa. off the window and good for Daquan Smith. He's got 12 now in this first half to lead Radford. And... We're going to have a foul on Pierce. This is after the basket. Basket goes in, and hmm, that was interesting. Pierce draws his second 16 foul on a collision with Trimble here. Pierce sort of trips over R. Day Javis and stumbles yeah. into Trimble. That is called bad luck. Hmm. You know, if you're going to foul something, <laughs> you want to earn it. Speaking of, here's Davis with Paxson Logic, Armando Baycott, Seth Trimble, and Jalen Withers. Here's Trimble on the drive, and he got stripped of it. Another Carolina turnover there. Eight, and the lead for Harris, and Trimble swats it out of there. And that's the way you make up for it, Wes. Wow. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, discussion about how Seth Trimble fits in his sophomore year. Do things like that, you're going to earn a little more time on the wood. Now you're going to get in less trouble for turning the ball over, but he still turned the ball over. Antoine left it short. Here's Davis. Wojcik thought about it. Trimble, here's Withers. Another very interesting piece for Hubert Davis's team here is Jalen Withers. 11 to shoot on the drive with a left hand. Withers first points at the Tar Heel. 
Withers, again, he's like high in that he's a very bouncy, athletic kind of guy. He can shoot the three, and obviously he can drive it to the basket. It's a pretty good offensive rebounder. That, North Carolina just has a lot of elements, Wes. It's going to be a challenge for Hubert Davis to figure out how, how they all fit together. Yeah, I agree with you on that, Dan. Six That's minutes. a good challenge to have. Yeah, no question. Five to shoot. We go inside of six to play. Harris blocked by Baker. 2.1 on the shot clock for Radford. Again, and Baycott does a great job moving his feet. This is very optimistic by Harris to think he's going to get it over Armando Baycott. But the shot clock is running down, so he feels like he has to pull up and shoot it. But credit Baycott with moving his feet and not letting Harris go by. Yep. Darius Nichols has done a nice job. Working through his bench, by the way, in this first half as well. You gotta catch this and shoot it. There is Smith, and that is deep and missed everything. Air ball on Radford will give it to Carolina. That's the second shot clock violation that Radford has suffered today. North Carolina defense. North Carolina's problem hadn't been on the defensive end. They haven't been able to hang on to the ball on offense. Pierce did a nice job trailing Davis, got the block. Radford leading one, and a block on Withers. Walk us through this, because there's our first drive and blocking call. Well, if you have a straight path to the basket, and he does, Withers cannot step in from the side. That's called a straight line drive, and the officials are looking for that this year. But again, Wes, this is the second time we've seen it. Turner is not going to shoot the three. You don't need to go out there and attack him, drop off, and make him dribble the ball. Yep, Chandler Turner, 6'7", from Detroit. Started his college career bowling green. Radford, the one-point lead. Walters with Turner. Now that's a better job by Washington playing back. Davis following Trenton Walters around, and then Withers knocked it away. And How about that? It. Yep. Davis. Lob for Washington to catch. Up strong and fouled, and that was Turner, I believe. It'll be his first seven on Radford with 5-10 to play here in this first half, and Jalen Washington, who a year ago was 65% at the free throw line, will go to the stripe here. Now, Washington is a kid who really got off to a slow start last year, mainly because of injuries. I like his potential, though. Free throw good. Don't forget, coming up next, game two or game three of our triple header, really, because Virginia Tech beat High Point earlier today at Blacksburg to get us cranked up. Mike Monaco standing by with Randolph Childress. Dartmouth and number two Duke tonight from Cameron, followed by nothing but net. Live from Coach K Court as well. And the Hokies put 94 on the board tonight. Kenny Brooks' crew can score now. They would have easily gotten by those Bonner led <laughs> women's teams <laughs> in Stanton, Virginia years ago. Talented, talented eighth ranked women's team in the country at Virginia Tech. Congratulations to Kenny and his team on the win. Look at Withers moving his feet against yeah. Giles. Five to shoot for Radford. Carolina in front on the Washington free throws. Harris the drive and a block is called on Trimble. That's going to be a hard charge to take this year based on the rule change. I don't know whether the rule change affects here. Let's take a look. Drives the ball to the basket. And the rule is that you have to be planted. You have to have an established position before the offensive player sets his last foot before he jumps into the air. And that looked to me like Trimble was late. Harris knocks the free throw down. First free throws of the night for Radford. Truth Harris are excited about his defensive prowess as much as anything. Here's what we're talking about. To be able to establish lead and guarding position, an airborne player on an airborne player with the ball, the defender must establish legal guarding position before the opponent places the last foot on the floor i.e. the plant foot before becoming airborne. So that's not before they become airborne, it's before they plant to the last foot. Got it. So it's an earlier yes. measure as opposed to what we've seen in the past. Well, I read an article where Curtis Shaw, the supervisor of officials right. in the Big 12, said 
that he reviewed 100 plays that were called charges last year, and based on the rule, rule 96 of them would have been called blocks. How about that? Antoine on the drive and a whistle and foul. A couple of free throws coming for Brian Antoine. I think that's Jalen Withers. So Withers has picked up a couple of fouls here. Six on Carolina with 417 to play. But, but the thing is, Wes, North Carolina has some fouls to give in there. They do. Yes. And that might not have always been the case here. Yes. Brian Antoine, Dan already told you, a 91% free throw shooter a season ago now has seven. His Villanova career, now don't forget, that's a Jay Wright Villanova thing. That's not Coach Neptune. Kyle's done a great job, don't get me wrong, but Villanova had him stacked like firewood up there on the main line. And when you got hurt, you kind of lost your spot Absolutely. for rotation. And Antoine endured injuries in two of his three years there, right, Brent, uh, Dan? Well, yeah, and he was hurt a little bit last year at uh, at Radford, so yep. he has struggled with injuries. And the Highlanders, I think, are very optimistic that he can get through, at least very hopeful that he can get through this season without injury because he's going to be one of the best players in the Big South. Yep. Radford, a three-point lead here. Had a four minutes to go. 12 to shoot. There's a nice pass. R.J. Davis to Jalen Washington for his first field goal. Boy, North Carolina can be very dangerous in penetration, Wes. It's going to be really important for defenders to stay in front of those guys. Yep. Here's Giles inside of four to go, and that's an offensive foul. It's on Pierce, and that's his third by my count on DeAndre Pierce with 3.40 to go. An illegal screen. Yep. Tell you what. R.J. Davis, the delivery of the basketball. Carolina within one. Wednesday night, men's soccer semifinals. Carolina Syracuse at 6 Eastern, followed by Louisville Clemson at 8. All matches right here on the home of ACC Championships, ACC Network. All right, now, Hubert Davis has got some interesting combinations. Here's one that I think a lot of folks are interested to see. Elliot Cadeau, R.J. Davis, and Cormac Ryan with Ingram and Baycott. And there's Harrison Ingram. Missed the first two. They scrapped to the floor. And last touch by Ingram as he was battling Smith underneath the goal to our right. Wes, and I think that word scrap is totally appropriate for what Radford has done here yep. in this first half. You know, they've made some shots. They've, they've hit 54% of their shots. They've made some tough ones, but my goodness, they have really worked hard. Carolina's hitting 59% from the floor. There's True Harris, and he scores. Harris has got six on his second field goal. Ahead of three minutes to play in this first half. Ingram fired a pass to Baycott, and Turner draws his second. That is eight now on Radford. You know, that's really Harris tough. Nichols team's going to see Carolina at the line here. Yeah, that's really tough for Radford to defend. They don't have a lot of size. The size they do have is in foul trouble. And when North Carolina is going to push the ball up the court like that and spread the court yeah. and leaving Baycott one-on-one -on -one against a guy he's got by four inches on the inside, that's going to be tough. Baycott's got 11 points and seven rebounds in this first half. And the free throw make it 12. All right, Dan, your boy did a little math in the offseason. Okay. Armando Baycott, 68 career double doubles, 132 games. 52% of his college games have been double doubles. I don't know where that fits in the pantheon of that stat, but that caught my eye. Well, in the pantheon of that stat, Billy Cunningham, 87% of his games. Wow. Is that right? I think so. I think that's what I read. 87% of his games are double double. The Cattery kid now, he gets lost in the discussion sometimes, doesn't he? When you talk about numbers, Bradford by one, under three to go. Antoine trying to keep it alive, and Harris, Harrison Ingram with the rejection. Antoine was by Baycott, and he thought, okay, I'm going all the way here. Yep. But Ingram does a great job just jumping straight up in the air. He's not trying to knock it into the third row. He does, but he's not. I mean, he just flicks his wrist there. Doesn't bring that arm down. Inbounds here's Giles. 
working in traffic, fall away. Good, tough shot. Kenyon Giles, nine in the first half. Open the scoring with a big three tonight, and it's been a steadying hand for Coach Nichols here in this first half. There's Davis on the drive. Well done again. Dan, another drive for Carolina off the perimeter again. You can't come off Baycott, and Davis takes great advantage of that. Tar Heels to within one. Right side, this is Kyle Burns, a redshirt freshman from Marietta, Georgia, who's on the floor for the first time as Justin Archer scores. Second field goal for Archer. That's some pass and some catch in traffic. Yep. Archer, remember now, he's got two personal fouls. Bounce to Baycott. Archer there. Skip to the corner. Ingram tees a three. You're not going to get a better shot than that. And Ingram is a guy who can make them. Left corner, here's Burns. Bounces away. Baycott collects the rebound. He's got eight now in the first half. Cadeau for Ryan. Look at the crisp ball movement. Standing three, Cadeau. And we're going to get a whistle and a foul on Radford here. And they better hope that's on Burns. It is. Yep. Kyle Burns, by the way, is a fascinating story. A young man who signed with the Radford program and then had some medical issues. He was diagnosed and ultimately had brain surgery a year ago and has worked his way back, re-enrolled in school, and they're looking forward to having him. He is a scorer by nature. And with Radford protecting a three-point lead, here's Cormac Ryan at the line. There's not a lot of basketball activity, Wes, that you can really do when you're recovering from brain yeah. surgery, so. He's got a number one. His health is yes. He's had a long road piece. back and he's working hard. Yep. Second one good. Ryan's got eight here in his first half as a Tar Heel. One point lead for Radford with 90 seconds to go in our opener tonight on ACC Network and the men's guard. Burns on the drive. Can't finish. Baycott did a nice job altering that. He's got nine rebounds. Here is Cadeau, got caught in the air, but enough for Davis's three. Ingram crashed the glass, Archer the rebound. Into the corner, Smith. Fall away two. And Ingram in Carolina now. Again in the front court. Davis couldn't get through. Ryan, and a foul on Burns. That was a really nice job by Cormac Ryan. He was spotting up for a three, but Davis's pass was not a really good pass, and Ryan didn't try to force it. He controlled the ball and drove to the basket, and he is an excellent free throw shooter. One and one are two shots here for Cormac Ryan. Eight already make it nine. I just think that as time goes by, Ryan is going to end up being a wonderful addition for this North Carolina squad. You see Elliot Cadeau going off the floor? Should be a senior in high school. <laughs> Cormac Ryan is 25 years old. He's got 10. How about the difference? Is five years, 10 months, and 10 days. <laughs> it's almost six years. Throwing away. Here's Cormac Ryan. Bounce pass, Ingram, and one. Dan, you talk about what a sneaky defensive guy Ryan is. Really good distribution of the basketball right there. Well, he made a great defensive play, intercepting that ball, and then he's got the ability to push it up the court. He steals the ball. He sees he's rising up to throw it back. And so once the offensive player leaves his feet, he goes and gets the ball. And then what a great pass in transition. Well, Carolina's got a three-point advantage and a chance to make it four with 40 seconds to go in this first half. Don't forget our friends with nothing but net will be here at the break. Kelsey Riggs and company. Joel Berry, Carlos Boozer, Luke Hancock. Always good to see those guys. Here's Harrison Ingram at the line. They don't make many field trips where we get to see him, Wes. Oh, that's good. Run in miss there. Lead is three. Probably two possessions left in this first half. Antoine for the tie. And 
Davis the rebound and Hubert Davis. That's the kind of aggressiveness that Bradford has shown throughout the first half. Yep. Timeout for Hubert Davis. He'll waddle, he'll wind this thing down here in just a moment. Your chain's off. We can fix it now, and you're done. And a three-point lead for Hubert Davis's team. We've seen really good shooting both ways here in this first half, but I'm guessing the third-year coach of the Tar Heels is not crazy about the turnovers as he works well, through the Well, he's not crazy month. about the turnovers, and I think, you know, he's going to point out that Radford has shot the ball very well, and he's going to attribute that to the fact that they can increase the defensive tempo, but I think this is a situation where you got to tip your hat to Radford. They have come in here. They are totally unafraid. Yep. They have been scrappy. They've made some tough shots, but they have been aggressive. So... Basically a one point six second differential shot clock to game clock to wind down this half. Paxson Wojcik's come back on the floor with Davis, Ryan, Baycott, and Ingram. That was the starting lineup, wasn't it? For Carolina. Yeah. Yes, it was, sir. Okay. See, I'm in midseason form here already. You're doing great. <laughs> like it's game 30 for you, not game one. <laughs> Let's see what Carolina does here. They've got ample shooting and options here. And Eight to shoot. Davis starts the traffic. He'll get all the way to the rim and lay it in. That's one way to do it. Sure is. Nine for Davis. The lead is five. Midcourt three at the horn by Harris is a front rim miss. But North Carolina is going to take a 46-41. And Kenyon Giles with the basketball. Giles scored well early but sort of tailed off. He had nine in the first half. Here is Smith, hard drive and one. Nicely done, 14 now for Daquan Smith. And the foul is gonna be on Paxson Wojcik. And this is really a nice job by Smith, just putting the ball down and getting to the basket. And again, it's gonna be harder for secondary defenders to step in there and help. And that's one of those plays where he had a straight line path to the basket and the defender bumped him on the side. And so that's a foul. And the free throw good. And Radford to within two to open this second half on the three-point trip from Daquan Smith. Smith is, he's only 6'1", but he's a strong kid, weighs 195 pounds, and he's used that physical stature very effectively. Ingram a standing three at the front. Harrison Ingram with eight. That's his second triple of the ball game. And North Carolina made their first five threes, then they missed their next five, so. Yep. Maybe they're going to start another streak. Turner against Ingram. Here is Smith against Paxson Wojcik. Brian Antoine, who had eight in the first half, Smith's 12, led Radford. There's Turner in traffic in school. Chandler Turner, that's his first points. And he is a, he's a graduate transfer from Bowling Green, and they're really going to need him to produce on the inside. Ingram. Skip for Ryan. That's a three. It's a back rim miss. Look at Ingram go chase the offensive chance. Now Davis launches. Too strong. Baycott. Third try for the Tar Heels. Guess what? He's now got a double double. Yep, sure does. And How about that pivot? Armando had it blocked. I think Justin Archer got a hand through there. Archer's given up a couple of inches and 30 pounds, but he is a very aggressive, tough guy. Antoine. Tough shot. Armando the rebound for Carolina. RJ Davis looking for help. We'll back out on the drive, and here's Ryan. Breakouts alone inside. They didn't see him. And here he is with the ball. Spins inside, and he on Archer. He was mismatched against Daquan Smith, and Smith was calling for help, and he thought somebody was going to come and guard Baycott, so he left him. Baycott was all alone, and you can't give him that much room. Five-point lead for Carolina. Antoine a fall away. Rattles in. Double figures for Brian Antoine with 10. And Radford so far here equal the task at the start of the second half. Not surprising. There's Harrison Ingram. Tough shot. And almost got the and one opportunity. And that's the second time he's been into the photographer. Yes. <laughs> Third on Chandler Turner. It's the first of the half on Radford. Ingram going to get a couple of free throws at the line. Let's clean up Baycott's double-double here. 69th of his career. He's now third in the ACC all-time. 
He was tied coming into tonight with the legendary Ronnie Shavlik at NC State who played in the mid 50s for the Gray Fox Everett case as Ingram knocks the free throw down. And I will tell you the reason I thought about that today was that Ronnie Shavlik played in an era of college basketball where tonight we're reintroducing you to numbers like seven and eight. <laughs> Ronnie Shavlik wore a number 70 when he played at NC State. And that's one of the rule changes this year. You yeah. have numbers from zero to 99. Yep. I'm waiting on the first cap to wear 99 now in college basketball. Giles. Jump shot good. Carolina fans thought he might have gotten a maybe an extra edge. Nothing there. And now there's a turnover. Radford can tie. Here is Burns, and he had it blocked out of there by Ryan. Really, really good play at the rim tonight, defensively in transition by Carolina. Really a nice job by Harrison Ingram in this particular situation with the fast break. A little bit of contact there. What Ingram does is he forces Radford to give up the ball earlier than they should. Yep. So he can rotate down to the guy who receives the pass. That's really a good transition defensive play. Dequan Smith will hand it on the wraparound to Truth Harris, who's back on the floor, along with Burns, who played briefly in the first half. Out front. Radford has suddenly gone very small. Yep. 10 to shoot. Here's Giles. Long three. And the rebound for Paxson Wilson. Ahead for Ryan. Lead inside. Baycott the catch and score. That is a great fast break. Radford really said they're playing small guys. And they just pushed the ball up the court. And Baycott made that happen just by running and setting himself up on the interior. Yep. And Baycott does that as well as anybody in the country. Here's Dequan Smith. Now Baycott the switch. And Smith will shoot, and it spins out. Ingram gathers. Again, Baycott does a nice job preventing Smith from getting around it. Armando wants the ball. Radford's gone small, and Harris stuck a hand in, knocks it out of bounds. That's that going to get us to a timeout. That time Smith did a great job fighting Bake off on, Bake out off on the inside. Well, and Armando is kind of owning it a little bit here in the second half. But here's that transition chance. Great look from Cormac Ryan. Back to Chapel Hill tomorrow. This is cleaned and his Tar Heels <laughs> lead by four at the moment. And interestingly enough, Wes, last year in the preseason polls, North Carolina was everybody's number one. Yep. And I thought that put some expectations on a team that was a flawed team. They were a flawed team the year before they got hot at the right time. Sure. This year, I think much more reasonable in terms of their preseason rankings, although when you're at North Carolina, you can never say expectations are reasonable. These guys are among the premier programs in the country. The expectations are always high. And the bench now on the floor a little bit. Elliot Cadeau has come in. Jalen Withers as well. Cadeau, nice pass. Baycott. Armando yes. Baycott's got 19, six in the second half. We've talked about Cadeau and his speed, but he showed you some strength right there because he left his feet. He was in trouble. Radford actually got a hand on that ball, but somehow he was able to force it into Bacon. Burns caught by Cadeau, pivots out and scores. Kyle Burns on the board. First points for the redshirt freshman. Uh, the guy has his pivot foot like that. You don't want to leave him in the clear lane to the basket. Oh. Baycott couldn't finish the soft layup against Pierce, who's on the floor. He won't miss many of those. DeAndre Pierce now playing with three fouls early in this second half for Coach Nichols. There's Kenyon Giles. And a scoop and score. Boy, Giles is. He's not afraid of anything. No, and he's made a bucket full of tough shots tonight, too, already. I mean, he goes right at Baycott and then right into Cadeau. Yep. And again, if you're Cadeau, you move your feet and you stay on the side of him to try to stay between him and the basket. If you hit him with your body, that's going to be called a foul. Kenyon Giles from Chesapeake, Virginia. Averaged eight points. He's got 13, now looking for 14 here 
in Chapel Hill tonight. Again, he's only five feet eleven, but he's very well put together. Yep. One point lead for Carolina. Withers barreling down and off the window. Jalen Withers' second field goal. But again, another one of those grad transfers left. A lot of experience. He said he started more than 50 games during his career at Louisville. Tario's a three-point lead. Five and a half gone in the second frame. Burns a spot up two. And R.J. Davis and Withers right at the rim. Here's Jalen Withers working on Daquan Smith. Cadeau. Look at this, and a foul will be ticketed to Giles. It'll be his second. Elliot Cadeau has got that blur factor with the ball in his hand. Yeah, he does, Wes, but in, on that, in that particular situation, as I'm sitting over here watching, I mean, he made a nice move, but I was thinking when he caught that ball, keep the ball moving, reverse it to the other side. Davis catch and shoot off the inbounds pass. Too strong and Archer the rebound for Radford. You know, West Radford refuses to go away. And yep. if this game ticks down. If it stays this close, then suddenly all the pressure falls on these North Carolina Tar here. That's right. Eight to shoot. Here's Harris rolling into the traffic and too strong. A little out of control maybe for Truth Harris. 12th rebound for Baycott. Look at this move. Cadeau draws the foul at the basket. I mean, they're going to give him a shooting foul. On that yep, sure are. I think he was fortunate there. He got dribbled himself right into trouble. Third on Harris. Yeah, there's really Third not on much Radford. room here. That's a pretty nice job to surround him. Almost traveled with the basketball, but really good presence of mind to feel that pressure around him and try to throw the ball up at the rim. Cadeau missed the free throw. Every time you watch this Cadeau kid play, Wes, you have to remind yourself he should be in high school. Yep. Good looking prospect. And gets the back in for his first point. Freshman from West Orange, New Jersey, played at the Link Academy in Missouri. They won a national prep title a year ago, in part because of his exploits. Well, he is a really good ball handler. Gets everybody else involved. And West just observing him here through the first half and the first few minutes of the second half. He looks to me like he doesn't mind taking risks. Nope. Antoine against Baycott. And a scoop with the left hand, no good. If you, if you keep taking tough shots, eventually it's going to catch up. How about that? Dan, the end-to-end -end momentum tonight has been pretty good by the Tar Heels. And they've built some momentum here, Wes, with some defensive stops. Yep. Antoine back for Trent Walters now, the freshman from Frisco, Texas. And Cadeau is whistled for a foul off the ball. It'll be his second, third on Carolina. Let's go back to the transition. Well, we're talking about transition. You push it up the court, and you got a guy like R.J. Davis. He gets knocked off his path, but he still has the agility and the strength to recover and get that ball up to the basket. Yep. And if he misses West, you know what happens? Baycott is standing right there for the rebound. Armando Baycott does that as well as anybody you'll ever see, just following the ball to the basket. Tend to shoot for Radford. Trailing six. Walters bounced away. Ingram had a shot. Withers finally collects. Now Cadeau on the drive to the basket and one. How about that? Because we're seeing that this is a North Carolina team that can be very dangerous in transmission. How about that acceleration with the dribble? He's going at a very slow, leisurely pace, and then he just explodes. Walters the foul. Tremble is checked in for Carolina. You see Giles go out for Coach Nichols Highlanders. And Cadeau missed the free throw. And now we get a whistle as the ball got knocked away. 
Well, I think Radford is in a danger zone right here, Wes. They need a basket. Turner trying to get it inbounds, and finally Daquan Smith into the backcourt. But here recently, the North Carolina defense is limited to nothing but tough shots. Trumbull on Antoine. Radford's missed their last four. 13 to shoot. Now to go with Smith. Back for Pierce. Seven to shoot. And this will be Daquan Smith. Fall away on Washington. Good. Oh my. Daquan Smith. Six and a half. 18 in the ball game. Tremble. Left it short. Wes, that was a huge shot sure for Radford. Yep. North Carolina played really well defensively, and Jalen Washington didn't do a bad job. He forced Daquan Smith to shoot over. Here's Smith, back door, rebound, and Archer can't finish it. Inside, Withers knocked it out, lead for Ingram. Bounce pass, center of the floor is a turnover. Pierce stepped right in the passing lane. Trying to do too much right there. Antoine. That's a situation where you're in the fast break. Kiddo is on the court. Get him the ball. Nine gone in the second half. Smith again. And Pierce grabbed the rim. Second time basket interference has been called on DeAndre Pierce. Pierce. Well, Daquan Smith, shot clock winding down, gets in his bag, Dan. Ball away three. Radford trailing five at Chapel Hill. And legends in every program. Carolina's got miles of them, right? There's the National Player of the Year from 1978, Phil Ford. He's Carolina's basketball royalty, right? Radford's program, by definition, is not that old, right? But the guy on the left, David Smith, was one of Radford's greatest players in an era when they were Division II. And next to him is his wife, Pebbles Maynard Smith, who's one of their finest women's players ever. <laughs> And great to see Smitty, as he's known, and Pebbles here at the game tonight in Chapel Hill, pulling for their alma mater. Now coming out of that break, what does North Carolina do? They go right to our, right to Armando Baycott. Sure. Tar Heels have pushed it back to seven. By the way, maybe in our ESPN family of networks, the most noted Radford alum is 98 grad Marty Smith of Giles County High School. And number nine could not be here tonight. He is on assignment. He did text me to say he's losing his mind at dinner, checking in on the game. Proud of his Highlanders tonight and the way they're competing. When he's at dinner, the best thing to do is lose your mind rather than some other part of <laughs> That ball got knocked away on the Davis layup. North Carolina has really picked up the defensive pressure. Radford. They made a lot of tough shots in the first half. They've made some here in the second half, but their percentage has dropped off considerably. And Ryan with Baycott. Zayden High played briefly in the first half. And the freshman from San Antonio's back on there. That's Ingram. Three balls spun out. Look at High who get the rebound in traffic. And now Baycott cleans it up and draws the foul before he tapped it home. And the foul is going to be on Justin Archer. That gets his third. Five on Radford now. Well, one of the issues I think that Zayden High has had in this game is he, he looks like he could be a little stronger. The Radford guy's just out muscled in there, but nobody's going to out muscle Armando Baycott. First of two for Baycott, good. Don't forget, Saturday morning, the ACC Huddle Crew will be right here in Chapel Hill, Kingan Stadium, 11 o'clock Eastern. One hour setting you up for BC Virginia Tech. Halftime shows pre and post. And then Saturday night, ACC Network primetime, the battle for the victory bell. Duke and Carolina here at Kingan Stadium in the huddle all day long right here on ACC Network. And the last time Radford was in trouble, and they're in trouble again, Smith. Hit a really tough three-pointer. Here's Walters. Looking inside at Chandler Turner and 
Hops in the corner. Here's Giles. I really liked his game for the night, too, Dan. Well, he's fearless. Yeah, he, fearless. But he's in there with a couple of guys who are really big. And High cleans it up. Baycott and Ingram did a really nice job forcing Giles into a tough shot. Spin out three for Ingram. Radford's getting chances in, to cut into this, Dan. Yeah, but it's all chances against the set defense, Wes. We've had very few transition opportunities here in the second half. Radford, one of their last seven. Ten to shoot. And Archer had it swatted out by High, and the foul is going to be on Zayden High. That'll be the second on the freshman from San Antonio. Four on Carolina. And Cormac Ryan tried to take a charge there. And the officials decided there wasn't that much contact. Last year, that might have been a flop. Right. So the flopping rule is still in effect. But the officials have been told to only call the most egregious ones. Justin Archer knocks the free throw down. He has five. Wait, they really needed that big grab team. But again, Radford has had to work so hard for all of their offensive opportunities here in the second half. Archer at the line, seven rebounds to go with his five points. I'll make it six. And here comes DeAndre Pierce, still playing with the three fouls back into the ball game for Coach Nichols. Baycock, now for high. Ingram. Here is Harrison Ingram. Strong drive in the left hand bucket. That's a really for Ingram, Dan. That's a nice play by Ingram because, again, if he misses that, Armando Baycott is right there for the rebound. Lead is nine on the drive, and a foul is called, I believe, before the shot. Kellen Milliner whistling R.J. Davis for the foul. His first five on Carolina. We've seen Ingram miss a couple of threes. But he's a guy who can all you have to respect his ability to shoot the three. And how about this for a 6'8 guy handling the ball up front, beating the guard off the dribble, getting it all the way to the goal. They are going to award Truth Harris two free throws here. And he has six points. For the most part, North Carolina, with their switching defense, has kept Radford from penetrating to the best. It's two shots. Good if you can get away with it. Five team fouls, a one and one, and not in even the ballpark of the one and one. It's a two shot foul, which, quite frankly, I was a little surprised to see. Well, and certainly not one and one on five fouls. So Harris will have the back end of what was called a two shot foul here. And he got the single free throw for his seventh point. Well, the Radford problem recently, in addition to their offensive struggles, is they have not been able to stop North Carolina. Right. North Carolina has been getting some good shots, particularly when they get the ball inside. On the perimeter, the three no good. Ingram couldn't corral it. In the corner, triple Giles. And the rebound for Pierce. He'll kick for Antoine's three. They had two really good looks at yeah. it, Wes. Can't argue with either. No, no, there. no, no. And that three that North Carolina missed, that allowed Radford the opportunity to get down the court and get a wide open shot. Paxson Wojcik is on the floor. He with the 10 stitches in his forehead. Yeah. Why he's wearing that headband. Davis will follow on. RJ Davis now with 13 on his sixth field goal. Wesson, it's been a comfortable 13 for Davis. He hasn't really forced I, very much. I think he's had a nice night. One of three Tar Heels in double figures. Carolina by 10. It's their largest lead of the game. Nine. Eight to shoot. Antoine a fall away three. Air okay. ball it. He didn't even try to get by Baycock, but Baycock does a nice job staying in front of him. What a pass. Wojcik 
Sliding baseline. Skip for Ingram. The return into the corner for Ryan in front of the bench three. That Cormac Ryan can do. He has 13 in his Tar Heel debut. And Dan Ball movement has been very good here at times tonight for Carolina. Absolutely, and this is a situation where Cormac Ryan is going to have to reset. He's got to move on that dribble and knocking it down. He's going to make that shot. Wow. This is Cassie. She never really pitched. Carolina debut tonight, a transfer from Brown. And there's an interesting tie here because Paxson's dad, of course, was an assistant at Chapel Hill under Matt Darty. now with Tom Izzo. That's Tim Pete because Doug Wojcik at one point coached at Tulsa. Tim Pete played for Tulsa. And Tim Pete used to babysit Paxson Wojcik. And his brother. And his brother, thank you. And Dan did a little field reporting tonight before the game. <laughs> huh? You went over and talked to Paxson's mom, Doug's wife, Lael, right? Well, I talked to her, and of course, moms are always looking for babysitters. Yes. Uh, particularly <laughs> when you need to go to basketball games and stuff. So they're always looking for babysitters. And of course, she, uh, Tim Pete wasn't babysitting while they were going to basketball games. But right. She said it's hard to find babysitters, and it's great when you can get one of your, there she is. Leo Wojcik, great to get one of the players to do it. There you go. Time out, Chapel Hill. See you guys tomorrow. See basketball. Everybody at Smith Center is a little excited about it. <laughs> uh, Clemson, check the old scoreboard here, Dan. NC State leading. Uh, by the way, Winthrop, another favorite in the Big South. UNC Asheville, of course. Winthrop, that, Wake Bradford. that Wake Forest Elon game. Phoenix. Elon has scored 45 points. There's still four minutes left in the first half. Phoenix. 45 to 31, so defense certainly optional in that one. Here's Bay pass. pass. Yep, great look, Roger. Got Monday Bay Pat. The basket. Full disclosure, producer Matt Krause and me are proud <laughs> Elon alums on this crew here tonight. Love Steve Forbes pulling for Billy Taylor's team. Fall away by Giles. Front rim miss. And here is, look at Truth Harris, nice pass for Pierce in the dunk. That is the first Radford field goal in over five minutes. They're now two for their last 12. Lead 13 for Carolina. Ryan Wojcik. That's what I'm talking about, Wes. You get that ball, you reverse it quickly, and the defense is really, it really puts some pressure on the defense to try to react. Foul on Turner will be his fourth, and seven now on Radford. North Carolina, they've got 28 field goals now and 17 assists in those 28 field goals. Really nice pass inside. And this is just a situation where Baycott has to come and help out, and nobody stepped in in front of Pierce. Radford desperately needed that one. Yep, so Harris and Ingram will go to the line here. Two-shot opportunity. You know, Wes, another interesting stat here in the second half is in the first half, North Carolina had 13 rebounds as a team. Armando Baycott had nine of them. Yeah. And in the second half, they've got 15 rebounds, and Baycott only has four. So Baycott getting some help from his teammates on the board. Yep. And Armando checks out Jalen Washington for Carolina. So Ingram, who hit the first, back here to try and finish the two-shot try and left it on the rim. Washington and Pierce got locked up and a hell ball will belong to the Tar Heel. That's just a really good job yep. by Washington. Nice quick move. And since North Carolina recovered the ball in the front in the front in the back in the front court, excuse me, the shot clock doesn't reset to 30, it resets to 20. Davis. Here's Wojcik. Ryan the screen, catch and shoot. And Washington did a good job in there to clean it up on the offensive glass. How about that, Dan? Six for Washington. He's made a couple of nice second and third effort plays there. Well, he said he came in with a, you know, they, they thought he was going to be a really good player, slowed by injuries. Turned over to Withers. No look, Logic, and knocked out of there. Harris Possibly. will come away with the play by Giles. Possibly he should have looked. <laughs> 
16 point game. Giles to fall away. Islanders can't get out of the shooting drought. Antoine the three does. Well, that's one of the, you know, they've missed a couple of clean looks, Wes. But that, that, for the most part in the second half, they've been shooting tough, tough shots. Brian Antoine now with 13. Radford to within 13. And there's the foul on Pierce. That will be his fourth. So now Radford has three with four. Pierce joins Turner and Archer, who also have four. That's the 18th foul. So Washington will go to the line for one and one. He was 65% last year. He's two for two tonight. Well, Radford has a couple of big guys who are missing. Josiah Harris, 6'7", six, six, excuse me, 6'8", 220 right. pounds, is yep. injured. He's not playing. Yep. And T.J. Neesmith at 6'9", 220, is not playing either because of an injury. They could sure use those big guys tonight. Yep. Nice pass. Cadeau served it out for Washington. Washington has done a nice job, Wes, playing on the inside. You know, he's a guy who fancied himself a perimeter player, but as he gets more comfortable playing on the interior, catches the ball really well in there. Yep. Lead is 15. Biggest of the night for Carolina. Antoine. Now here's Burns, runner with the right hand. And nicely handled. That is Truth Harris making another save. The photographers have taken a beating down under there, the basket in, in, in that exact spot. Yep. Great defense that time by Cormac Ryan. How about the Cadeau look here, Dan? Well, Cadeau, you know, Cadeau comes in with the reputation of somebody who can find players inside. And that is just, I mean, that's one of those plays, Wes, where he can see what's going to happen before he catches the ball and just releases it immediately. That was outstanding. He's got six assists in the ball game tonight in his debut for the Tar Heels. Giles, a lot of contact, got the bounce. He's a tough kid, isn't he? Yeah, 16 for Kenyon Giles. You hear about guys who can see the court. Well, Cano certainly seems to be one of them. Yeah, had a four minutes to go. Missed shot by Carolina. Recovered to Wojcik. He'll sneak baseline and score. Thompson Wojcik now with five. Under four to go. The lead is 15. This is one of these games. I'll tell you in a second here. Smith working for Radford. Fall away three. And they'll run it to the baseline. That's where it's recovered by Archer. Giles has no problem launching and the rebound Washington. This feels like one of these games where you're going to watch these two teams go their separate ways here after tonight. And two weeks from now, look at the box scores of their following games, right? Ryan on the drive, nicely blocked by Antoine. Because I think both these teams are ascending a little bit right here out of game one tonight. Wes, I agree with you, but the one thing that I would point out is that Radford, you know, and they, they've got some interesting games coming up. <laughs> They're actually going to play a game at the Greenbrier. Yep, exactly right. They're going to get Marshall on Friday night. They're going to play at the Greenbrier. We'll talk about that and more. Yeah, the Greenbrier. Darius Nichols will do a little film study in the bunker at the Greenbrier. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Wojcik the basket. Carolina's got a lead. Back in a moment. Starts right here at noon. BC, Virginia Tech at Alumni Stadium. And then Pittsburgh, Syracuse at Yankee Stadium in wow. the Bronx at 3.30. And then Mark May's son, Drake. You may have heard of him. <laughs> Carolina Duke, the battle for the victory bell is our ACC Network primetime game from beautiful Keenan Stadium at 8 o'clock Eastern time right here on ACC Network. The huddle fills in the gaps in between and always available on the ESPN app. Good to see number 14 at the ball game tonight up there. From Independence High School in Charlotte. Back in the day when they had the big shoulder pad numbers at Carolina, you could see them from the moon. <laughs> Eight to shoot. Here's Cadeau wow. on the drive on the basket. He was so quick with the dribble. Okay, Mr. Bonner. In the catalog of Carolina point guard quickness. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm not going to make that evaluation after 
one game. You're not doing that yet? Okay. No, not doing early, that. early for that, huh? Okay. Giles, soft touch. You know, there have been so many great point guards at North Carolina. I think it's unfair to compare that kid to anybody. We showed, you, we showed you Phil Ford earlier. He's I mean, one he was of the, a pretty good one. He was good off the bounce, no question about that. <laughs> Hubert Davis had a, what, Marcus Page on staff in the offseason. Marcus Page pretty good. There he is behind Sean May. Wes, you were talking about these two teams, and as the season goes on, looking at their schedules. Keep in mind that North Carolina, as they go through their non-conference schedule, Obviously, they're trying to get ready for conference play, but they're trying to build a resume yep. that will get them an at-large bid to the NCAA tournament if they don't win the ACC tournament. Radford, on the other hand, they're not trying to build any kind of a resume because there is no possible way that there's going to be two bids from the Big South. So what Radford's doing is playing against tough competition, trying to piece things together. The only games they really have to win are the games in the Big South tournament, yeah. and that will get them into the NCAA tournament. And, now, to, and to be honest, they were on a collision course for the Big South title game last year against UNC Asheville and got upset by Campbell in the semis at Charlotte. So Darius Nichols and his team know exactly the path. And I think by playing tonight, Marshall, Friday night, the Greenbrier, the game we mentioned, on down the road with. Well, they got games. They got games at they got, Clemson. They're going to play at West Virginia. They're going to play. Uh, you're right, at Clemson in late December. But again, they can win all those games, and they're not getting an at-large bid to the NCAA tournament. Cadeau missed the layup. Stick back off the hand of Elliott. Under two to go. It's a 15-point lead for Carolina. I'm really impressed with the way North Carolina just hung in there. Radford played really well in the first half. They made some tough shots. And North Carolina, they didn't get discouraged. They didn't start reaching and poking on defense. Yep. They just continued to play, I thought, really good defense in the second half in particular. They forced them into tough shots. And then they rebounded the ball yep. very effectively. So they did. Seth Tremble on the floor. They had eight turnovers in the second half, only three in the second half. In the first half, only three in the second half. That helps, too. Yep. Uh-oh. Bay caught a three. No good. He missed all six of his attempts from distance a year ago. So, technically, he's 0 for 7 in the last year and change. Final minute and a substitution here for Darius Nichols. And this is a nice touch in a, in a ball game like this. The head coach of the Highlanders is going to go to the bottom of the bench here, and he's going to bring Hunter Castleberry onto the floor, and David Vidor from Hungary, Dean Lockley from Charlottesville, and Trevor Rowe, a freshman on his roster, who's from Syracuse, New York, and the son of the former Orange star Matt Rowe, will come on here. And We were talking about Elliot Cadeau earlier. He's the preseason ACC Rookie of the Year, as voted by those media types, like Bonner and me. And Elliot Cadeau, if he wins, would be the fourth North Carolina guard to be the Rookie of the Year. Here are the other three, and they are different in each of their own ways. But Ed Cota might be the closest to where Cadeau is in terms of guard skill. Damn. Well, particularly in terms of his ability to pass the ball, the assist numbers there for Coda. Averaged almost seven, did Ed Coda. Twelve to shoot. This is Burns. Carolina's also gotten into their bench a little bit here. Oconwo, the West Virginia transfer, who originally is from the UK, is on the floor for the first time. James is six eight. And where is jersey number 32 for I North think Carolina? Technically, Wes Conco is still from the UK. He is. Transferred from West Virginia. Just went to school at West Virginia. That's right. In fact, he spent some time in his homeland this summer and didn't really get here uh, at the same time as the other players. But Oconquo is a guy, Wes, you know, big guy, six feet eight, 240 pounds. He's going to provide them some muscle inside that they're going to need as they, you know, Go down in the ACC schedule. Pierce will foul out of the ball game. There is James, who is from Maidenhead in Berkshire. Is it Berkshire or Berkshire? Berkshire, probably. Over here, it's Berkshire. Well, just like over there, it's theater, and here it's theater. <laughs> no, it's only theater <laughs> in certain parts of the country, Wes. 
North Carolina being one of them. I did that for the benefit of statistician Fred Kiger, who is from Pofftown, of course. Rural Hall, I'm sorry. The other suburb. <laughs> 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 And here's a three ball. That's Castleberry. And Wojcik the rebound, and Carolina's going to win. Tar Heels led by five, and a very nice test on opening night provided by Darius Nichols' team, Dan. Really impressed with the way Radford scrapped, and when they made shots in the first half, they stayed right in it. Hubert Davis, career win 50 as they